Hi everybody, gonna do another Beatles update from the car today. Not exactly the ideal way I like to make these videos, but sometimes I drag my stuff along with me. Gotta drive my girlfriend uh, someplace now and then on a Sunday, uh, and uh, I have like some time to kill where I get breakfast and wait for her in the car here. So I'm gonna make better use of the time by making a video. I got a lot of different stuff here. I got uh, a piece of memorabilia of sorts, I got uh, CDs, and I've got, of course, vinyl. And I think I'm going to start right off the bat with some vinyl. First thing I'm going to show you here is, uh, I'm going to open it up here on the side. It's the brand new release of Beatles Live at the Hollywood Bowl. I think I showed this in one of my other videos, but what's going to be special about this is, in the other video, I did not show the gatefold inside. We're going to open this up, which means I'm going to do something very uncharacteristic for me. That's not easy, trust me. I am going to rip the shrink wrap off here. That's right. It's not easy to do. It's like, you know, trying to, to break an addiction. Let's just let it go. It's like pulling a Band-Aid off. One, two, three. No pain, right? Oh, I don't believe I'm doing this. I do not believe that I am doing this. That's it. Shrink wrap be gone. All right. There it is. Now I can open it up, and there's the gatefold. Hope it was well worth it for you. Okay, there it is. Brand new Beatles Live at the Hollywood Bowl in order to coincide with the Ron Howard film eight days a week. Really nice picture of the Beatles bowing down there. Some uh, stage performances. And, of course, showing the label. Ta-da! You know, I gotta tell you, anybody who watches my videos for a long time knows I like to keep albums in their original shrink wrap. So it's not easy for me to part with the shrink wrap. Nothing can be done now. That is, I'd only do something stupid like that if I had another one sealed. <laughs> Ready to keep... It's going to stay sealed, this one. Never open. Ah so, <laughs> my other one will be the plain copy. Just wanted to have some fun. A lot of you, I'll bet, suspect that I was going to do that, or did I fool some of you? All right, now let's get a little more serious. As serious as I can, anyway. Um, just going to go off the vinyl for a minute to some CDs. Now, this is... Uh, Disc 4, I think it is. Disc 4. From a John Lennon CD box set that I used to have in my original collection called Lennon. And the reason I picked this up was because it was on its own and it was cheap. But the reason Disc 4 is cool is it has all the John Lennon vocal songs from Double Fantasy and Milk and Honey all together here. You got 14 tracks along with his uh, vocals on the song Every Man Has a Woman Who Loves Him. Those are like all kind of, that's a straight track. And to have them all together, you know, without the Yoko songs, you know, I, I like Yoko songs on, on Milk and Honey and Double Fantasy. But to have them on one CD like this, just the John stuff when I'm in the mood, I picked this disc up separately. I thought that was a, a decent uh, investment, so to speak. I showed these next two CD sets in a video. One of my record road, road store trips, record road store, record store road trip videos. Um, <laughs> but I didn't really go into as much detail as I'm going to now. This is uh, George Harrison Greatest Hits CD compilation, which I heartily recommend. I, I said it was Russian. Someone corrected me. said, no, it's Bulgarian. Um, I don't know. Um, blah, blah, blah. But I know it's a foreign disc. Uh don't know whether it's bootleg, don't know whether it's legit. I think it's legit. And I think that the beautiful thing about these CD compilations is that whether they're official or not, they're able to have all sorts of tracks on here from whatever record labels and a good sampling of the entire career. Uh, you got all kinds of songs on here spanning George's entire career, starting with stuff like Give Me Love, Give Me Peace on Earth, and My Sweet Lord, and stuff like that, all the way down to Brainwashed, his last album. So you got like uh, 
40 tracks on here. Some live stuff, some Wilbury stuff. Uh, a good sampler throughout his entire solo career. This is the best George Harrison collection of any of the ones that are out there. Now, this particular company has similar collections for John, Paul, and Ringo. Uh, Paul has a two-parter. He has the most material, so his is a two-parter. I haven't gotten that yet. Not sure if I'm going to. Um, and John also has, you know, his whole career is represented. But also, I picked the Ringo one up for now because the Ringo Star one, I mean, this, this is just great. It's a great photo shot, great back shot, Ringo Star greatest hits. And, you know, Ringo arguably, you know, doesn't have as much as the other three, but Again, I cannot impress upon you how cool this is. It's got, again, tons of tracks on here, same deal as the George one, spanning Ringo's entire career, you know. Well, it misses Sentimental Journey. You don't have Sentimental Journey, really. But you're going from stuff like uh, Boo Coos of Blues from 1970 and his early singles, of course, like It Don't Come Easy and his hits uh, like Photograph, You Are 16, the whole, the whole bit. But it... Also, a good sampling of his albums from the 70s and from the 80s, and even stuff all the way up to the 90s, stuff from Liverpool 8, and postcards from Paradise, his 2015 album, the whole thing. You've got uh, 45 tracks on here, and this is the only Ringo compilation to have. Yeah, I could quibble. There's a couple of things I would have put on here that I think are missing, but uh, you got a lot of good stuff. Okay, we're going to keep on going here. Um, back to the vinyl. Just got to be on the lookout. This car is pulling alongside of me here. I feel like a schmuck making a video in a car. but All right. This is what I thought was going to be an upgrade. Beatles not for sale. It's actually a, a bootleg album I already have. The reason I picked this up was because it was an upgraded, nice quality cover. Or so I thought. But this morning, in preparation for this video, I saw a nasty trick here that really pissed me off. And it's not the first time this has happened. Um, they put a sticker on. And if you peel the sticker off, what you discover is that underneath that sticker... Look at that dirty trick. Huh? There was another... There's a sticker mark under there. They were hiding it. Putting this over it. They put it in the, so that you think it's a minty copy, huh? I don't go for that. And it's not my usual record store, so I'm not blaming my usual record store for that. And also, I don't know if this is going to show up, but on John Lennon's hair, you got kind of a little bit of smudge there. It's, I didn't notice that till after I bought it. So I was maybe going to return this just because, you know, I bought it because I wanted an upgrade, and it's not an upgrade. They did a trick and covered it. But uh, you know what? I may frame one of these, actually. I might frame this one. So I'll let it go for now. <laughs> All right, uh, keeping up with the old bootleg experience, we got the Beatles, Shea, the Shea Stadium concert, but what we got here is, when we say Shea Stadium concert, it's the 1960, is it 66 or 67, 1967 maybe film of the, the Shea Stadium show, so it's, it's just actually the film, you know, on a record. It's not uh, professionally mixed or anything like that. No. So. But it's a cool cover, the way they copy the American Help album. That's why I really like it. And I had that in my original collection, too. So, you know, I got that back again, as I always say. And here's another bootleg I got back and happy to have it. This is a really cool cover, as you can see. It's a, an Abbey Road collection of uh, sessions, you know, for different versions of Abbey Road songs. But what's really cool with the front cover is it's one of the uh, photos of them obviously walking backwards. And uh, for those of you who didn't believe the Paul is dead uh, thing or was just a hoax, you thought maybe he was really dead and he made excuses that uh, 
walking barefoot on this was just an accident. He actually had some shoes on, some of them. Uh, I don't have a way to see if this is coming through, but he's wearing mo uh, sandals or moccasins, whatever, on there. So, I mean, if they were to use this cover or one other variation, he would have had shoes on. So, this stuff about him being barefoot to make it look like he's dead was a lot of bull. Uh, anyway, yep, there's the label, if you can see it. And this is called Return to Abbey Road, which kind of makes sense because they're returning, in, in other words, it's like they're walking backwards to Abbey Road Studios. Okay, now, uh, of course, when I tore off the shrink wrap to the Hollywood Bowl album, it was just a gag because uh, I still love shrink wrap and I'll still buy albums like this because they're in their original shrink. This is a George Harrison compilation, Best of Dark Horse, 1976 to 1989. And it's in the shrink wrap. Easy buy for me. Uh, even better is this is a special BMG Direct Marketing under license. It's a kind of a record club issue. So uh, it's got a little white box there, which is cool. And uh, this is nice to have. You never see this album. It's hard to see this album and find this album on the, in the wild, especially... In shrink wrap are you kidding and that's always my goal to repeat an old familiar story to get all the Beatles and solo Beatles in shrink wrap and this was a one that was really hard to find Ringo Starr blast from your past we'll always love that cover nice little compilation there's only got the one two three ten tracks on here not as not as much as the CD that had 45 but uh, really nice little collection from 1975 and the shrink wrap is not in great shape here it's a little on the grungy side but I've never seen this album in its shrink so that was good to get it's a capital reissue John Lennon mind games uh, I have this album you know the first Apple one the original one in shrink but this one I had to get even though it's a reissue because the shrink wrap on it is just so tight, man. So crisp. Look at that. It looks beautiful. It looks like a brand new store-bought album. And it's got the green capital on it. Boo. You want the apple? This is a nice promotional package for the CD release originally, I believe, of the compilations Beatles 1962 to 1966 and 1967 to 1970. Looks like a book, doesn't it? Uh, really nice. The packaging of this is why I wanted this. I wanted this for a while, but I found out that it's not complete. So it's only really good for the box. This is something that'll look cool on a shelf. I just like the look of it. I'm going to display it. But inside, it's missing a lot of stuff. It's got a videotape here, which is actually kind of uh, extracts from I Want to Hold Your Hand, Help, Hello, Goodbye, and The Fool on the Hill. This says it came out in 1993, and uh, you know the videotape here. It's a promotional tape that just shows some of the promotional film of the Beatles. All right, uh, but there were supposed to be a whole bunch of other goodies in here. You could see online there were supposed to be photos of the Beatles, I think a little booklet, negatives or something. And there's all little spaces here where they would go and be attached. There's a pocket here that's empty. So really, uh, I got this dirt cheap because it, it, it's incomplete and pretty useless in, in, in that regard. But the reason that I got it is because I, oh, I'll do this after I shut it off. I like the packaging. Thanks, everybody, for watching, as always. And uh, see you again soon. In fact, I'm going to be making right now a video of vinyl finds of all kinds. Thanks.